Well, after about a week of quiet weather, not only the Atlantic, but in the Pacific, we're starting to heat things back up in both basins. We have new storms to talk about, and it's right on schedule because as we look at hurricane climatology here, here we are at August 15th. We are on the uptick in terms of hurricane activity, eventually getting to a peak of around September 10th in the Atlantic Basin. The season coming to an end in November. That doesn't mean storms can't happen after that, but about 97% of all named storms happen within the six month season from June 1st all the way to November 30th. So here's a look at the Atlantic hurricane names. We are on name number five. We have our brand new subtropical storm Ernesto in the Atlantic. Typical date in the Atlantic Basin, so we're a little bit ahead of time here for the fifth name storm of the season is usually around August 31st. So coming in about two weeks ahead of time. And here's the latest advisory Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. from the National Hurricane Center showing a subtropical storm Ernesto tracking north in the North Atlantic and eventually taking a northeasterly turn moving into cooler ocean waters and falling apart eventually heading towards the United Kingdom. That'd be some good news for them. By that time, it's weakening, but it will bring some much needed rain to that country. Been very, very dry and very, very hot this summer, but notice it does strengthen a little bit more before starting to decrease its strength down to 50 miles per hour, up to 50 miles per hour by the time we get towards the end of the week. So what is a tropical storm or what is a subtropical storm? I should say. Well, it has two parts, part tropical and part non tropical. Now there are some distinctions, though. The strongest winds are typically farther from the center. The wind field is more expansive. Also, you'll find the heaviest rain far north and east of the center. Pretty much the western flank is just dry and just has a little bit of wind with it. Here's the overall imagery from the Atlantic Basin. Rather quiet. There are a few things we're going to talk about, but first let's get over to Ernesto. So here's how it looks from space. You can obviously see that pivot in the atmosphere here has a bit of a comma shape and resembles more of a nor'easter that we'd find in the wintertime along the east coast of the United States rather than a tropical system right now with that elongated tail. There's the western flank, hardly any precipitation with it. All the convection on that easterly and northeasterly quadrant as it lifts slowly towards the north. You can see the center of Ernesto right there, very well picked up. Now I'll switch up the filter on this and show you the water vapor imagery, pulling in some dry air from the north. I was looking at some visible satellite imagery earlier, and some of this dry air in the higher levels actually has some bits of the wildfire smoke out in parts of the west coast of the United States. So traveled quite a bit, but it's getting wrapped up into a bit of uh, Ernesto as it lifts off to the north. Obviously, you can see that convection there again off in the northeast quadrant. All right, sea surface temperatures is in a good spot of the ocean because this time of the year and in this spot of the ocean in particular, uh, running two to four degrees above the long term average here. So I'll put on a line and this will depict the line of about 78 degree water temperature or so. Now with a subtropical storm, it doesn't get all of its energy from the warm ocean waters, which is why it's subtropical. It does still get some of its energy from the difference in temperatures in the different levels of the atmosphere here. So even if it does move into cooler ocean temperatures, it will maintain sort of a structure as it does so. So say once it passes the 78 degree isotherm, it will start to weaken into the colder waters of the North Atlantic there, but certainly has about 24, 36 hours more of travel time through the very warm waters here to help it maybe even strengthen a little bit more than where it already is. Now let's go down to the south in the tropical Atlantic where we typically would find developing systems this time of the year. And I'm keeping my eyes on this cluster of thunderstorms convection that really has just developed over the last 24 hours, getting a little bit better organized and has a better presentation on satellite imagery here. And I'm going to switch up things here to show you what it looks like on different things. This is the, going to be the water vapor imagery. I've switched up the color table on it so it doesn't look like the one we just looked at uh, with Ernesto, but certainly you can see a little bit of a pivot in the atmosphere here and it's in a good spot too with the sea surface temperatures. Uh, we need them at 80 degrees or warmer for tropical development. So we have that here here and we also need some spin in the atmosphere and what you're looking at here is relative vorticity and what I'm keeping my eyes on are these bits of red here. We have some couplets of some spin in the atmosphere, but nothing really organized or very large, but we'll see if that changes as it moves off to the west towards the coast of South America and then maybe even travels to the southern tip of the Leeward Islands uh, farther down the road. Now what's coming off the coast of Africa? We look for African easterly waves to develop.
develop into our tropical systems and really nothing here for the next couple of days. A few weaker uh, systems moving out and hitting the coastline there, uh, but there's something a little more robust here over in the central part of the African continent that may hold together by the time it makes it to the coastline. So let's check on the main development region here. Over 50% of our category three hurricanes develop here and then move westwards towards the islands, the Caribbean and eventually the Gulf or the uh, east coast of the United States. Now we need those water temperatures, as I mentioned, to be 80 degrees or warmer and it has been warming, but still there are a few temperatures that are marginal, especially the farther north you're located. Overall, the main development region has recovered nicely from a very cool start. Uh, overall, about pff, maybe a tenth of an inch, an inch, a tenth of a degree below average for the entire area here. So that's an improvement from where we've been. Certainly out into the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, uh, the southwestern parts of the Atlantic, very, very warm. This entire area running well warmer than average for this time of the year and the 30 year average really uh, coming up to about a degree, a degree and a half above that long term average there. Now let's jump over to the Pacific. We are on our 12th named storm there. So exponentially more active than what we're having in the Atlantic so far this year. Brand new tropical storm lane has developed and our typical date in the Pacific Basin for the 12th named storm of the season is around September 19th. So over a month ahead of schedule in terms of this basin here looks a little bit less active than where we were last time we talked, but certainly there is some activity and this is tropical storm lane right here. And this is going to be one to watch because it is going to move in the shadow of Hurricane Hector that made a drive by to Hawaii. Here's the latest update here from the Hurricane Center at 11 a.m. Tropical Storm Lane. It is forecast to become a major category three hurricane, if not stronger. Sea surface temperatures in this area very, very warm and they have recovered nicely from all the upwelling, all the mixing of the waters that Hector did as it moved on through it. But look, it is heading towards the uh, islands state of Hawaii. We'll see what happens here as we get towards uh, the middle to end of next week if it does adjust farther south or farther north, but certainly going to be one to watch for Hawaii yet again after a very close call with Hector uh, just about a week ago. I am on social media. If you have any questions this hurricane season, you can find me on Facebook. Meteorologist Tim Pandage is also on Twitter, 13 Tim Pandage. We'll have another update possibly tomorrow if anything changes. Until then, enjoy your day.